Okay. So um, let me go back to sharing my screen. Okay. So um, let's see, let's pull this one up too. So your psychographic is going to give, uh, I mean, your demographic is going to give like the person's age, their location, which is zip code. It's going to give some hardcore facts about the um, uh, uh, extrinsic of the person and where they live and um, that kind of stuff. But the psychographic is their lifestyle. Style. Do they go to the gym? Do they go to the spa? Do they go grocery shopping? Do they Uber? Do they drive? Do they bike? Um, you know, how do they live on um, in in this space? Um, do they read um, Essence magazine or do they read the Wall Street Journal? Um, um, do they go to the gym or do they go to the park? Um, and so all of those things, when you begin to um, want to know how to get the right message in front of that person, you got to know where they are so that you can actually carry your message to that space. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. So in the ideal buyer piece, you you want to kind of come up with that person and give that to me. And that, and nowadays they actually have software where you can actually actually create a person. Like, what does this person look like? And so, and if he's fifty five white male, you can actually create a 55 year old white male and say, okay, how does he shop? Does he shop online or does he run into Walmart? Does he shop online or does he have his butler go get it? Does he shop online or does he, is he using Instacart? You know, that type of thing as to how does that person engage in their daily routine? So that's the psychographic of someone. And so let's look at what you said for how do you think that you can apply psychographic information to what you've laid out for demographic of renovation? Hold on, I'm trying to pull it over so you can see it. Mm -hmm. So I can see it without. Okay, can you see that? Yeah. So the DCLT resident, what do you, psychographically, who do you think that this person is? Um. Well, there's there's a lot of different types of DCLT residents, but some of them, um, a lot of them are are older, um, or or disabled. Um, there's plenty of young residents as well. Um, everyone is working class. Um, uh, some people live on on fixed incomes um, due to disability or or age. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what that would make me infer about their lifestyle, but that's kind of a, a profile of the population we serve. Do you think they have a lot of disposable income to go to um to to travel? No. Okay. So that's the kind of stuff. Everything that you just said has got to be in there. Cause for a lay person like me, I don't know that until you tell me. Mm -hmm. And so what you want to do is you want to bring down so many, you want to list that person. And if you feel like it's three different types of people, like I, cause I kind of heard that I heard you say some of them are older, some of them have disabilities. So then you want to create a profile of someone that's old. Then mm -hmm. you want to create a profile with someone that has disabilities because that person that has disabilities are going to have a different needs and different cycle, psychographic and different pain points of someone that's older. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. So, so you want to break this ideal buyer down as many ways as you possibly can. So when we start thinking about how we reach them and we look at, and let's go back to real quick, the strategy, the marketing concept, because if we skip ahead real quick mm -hmm. and we look at the marketing concept and we, I'm looking at the social media platforms, it tells me that um 2.7 billion people are using Facebook and then it tells me their ages you know so then it also tells me um what purpose is th does that social media platform serve it tells us what is best for which goes back to your objectives and then it also tells me the downside of uh, of actually using that platform. So what we want to do is when we look at the ideal buyer and we're looking at choosing the right social media platform, we're going to look at 
the psychographic and demographic of that particular person you want to reach to determine how we're going to engage them on that platform. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we want to expand what we say about your ideal customer um, and give it way more information here. And then if you have a different person um, that are kind of like in different, and you can define them as different audiences, like um, a population of people, when you say older people, what, what age are you looking at when you're looking at DCLT residents? Oh, um, age, I mean, really, there's, there's renters at least from anywhere between like 25 and 90. So that's a big range. And then the homeowners are, mm, a lot of the, a lot of the homeowners are younger, but some of the homeowners like have been, have owned the home for a long time, like multi-generational. And so there are some older homeowners as well. Uh, and so you may want to, you want to, you may want to put that down. You may want to say that, okay, we've got a, a 25 to 95 year old population. If you were to look at the median age of that, I would say that the average person would be 45, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to build that profile for the average person at 45, which represents, you know, our average, you know, is it a black person? Is it a melanated person? Is it a white person? Mm -hmm. Do you need to break it down like that as well? Because their needs may be different. Mm -hmm. um, so then I also heard, you know, the uh, disabled person, but then I'm also hearing that the future residents, what type of future residents are you looking to attract? Is it the same that you that are currently in your demographic or mm -hmm. is it, are you looking for uh, uh, a, a different type of you know, family? Or are you looking for, uh, did, are you going to stay with the disabled? Um, are, are you looking for young homeowners that may have problems moving into the Durham area? So you also want to define who those future residents are. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then let's look at the marketing strategy. Um, so here, what you did was you said product, newly renovated homes, uh, price, $2 million. And uh, promotion, annual, so you listed out what you currently do right now, annual fundraising letters sent to a Network for Good database, plans for renovation laid out online, in website, blog, and social media, and a make a donations contest. Tell me more about the make a donations contest. Now that I'm reading that, I'm like, why did I, why did I not write that in a complete sentence? Anyway, um, and I was just doing it really fast. Um, hmm, I think I was thinking like, we would have some kind of like reward for top donors. I don't have anything specific in mind. Or if we wanted to host some kind of donation event. Um, but that is not a very fleshed out plan. Okay, so, but that's fine. So the idea of being able to contest something yeah. so that there's a reward system so that there are, there's engagement around that we can flush that out a little bit more. So that's what we're going to ask is that you flush that out a little bit more and put that there. So you would actually say, oh, a contest, oh, the, the biggest reward with some type of prize and, and, and maybe think of what some of those prizes could be. And mm -hmm. then with the second piece, you said, um, what was the other, having a contest event. So you would actually have a um, you would actually have a kickoff event to say, hey, this project is running, and and then be able to have some type of uh, engagement during that period with the contest winner at the end. So you just write those two things: contest event as well as um, top prize giver coinciding with that event. Yeah, I don't know if this is something we've done in the past, but I know like. Um like Duke Children's Hospital used to do a kind of a raffle event or a, an auction event where different um, different organizations or, or companies would donate something to it. Like they would donate like a gift certificate or, you know, nine holes at a golf course or something like that. That's a lot of organization to do, but it's a an idea. Yeah, most definitely, especially for affordable housing, especially since, um, you know, you've got people charged up about it and, and willing to give. So mm -hmm. I think that those are two excellent things. I think you just probably need to write down a blurb around those two things that you just thought about, because mm -hmm. it all comes from, you know, the first recording the thought. 
So you never know what can happen, but first you got to record the thought so that when you take this to higher management, you're mm-hmm. saying, hey, this is, you know, this is, this is, here are some ideas to be able to make us more relevant in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Okay. Around renovations. And I think that that's really great because I think right now with this new project you have, you actually have a new relationship with Durham Tech Community College that can then assist in an event like that. So with what you have going on, it's very, very possible that you could you could arrange some things like that. Let's look at partnerships. Okay, so now based upon, oh, I'm sorry, before we go to that, let me show you, let's go back to this document that's now inside of your um your learning management system. And let's look at, after we define the marketing objective, which you've done so, and you've done a great job of doing that, you're looking at the ideal buyer. We're going to expand that a little bit when you go back and strengthen this assignment up just a little bit more. The mar- You're going to come up with the marketing concept. And so the marketing concept is basically focuses on the needs of the buyer. It's an integrated marketing uh, reaching the right person with the right message at the right time using target market data that solves a customer needs that results in a desired outcome. Okay, so I want to give you an example of that. This is something that I've done for another client. I put together their marketing strategy for them. They are a um, they are a women's um, facility that steams uteruses. That's what she does. Um, she's located in Durham. And so when I met with her, she basically said, my goal was to get her, give her a three-month marketing strategy where I would actually come in with the content and tell her how I was going to post based upon uh, what we were going to do for her in um, getting the social media calendar kicked off. So this is kind of what the concept looks like. This is over a span of three months. This particular client will distribute consistent daily content by using the following formula and schedule because she wanted to raise awareness around these issues uh, and what she's doing inside of her of her um, business. So this was a raise awareness campaign and to educate her customers about the proper use. She wanted to be able to talk about womb. She wanted to be able to talk about fertility. She wanted to be able to talk about relationships and she wanted to be able to talk about herbal medicine. That's the only thing she told me during our interview. And so what I had to do was I had to go look up because I knew nothing about her industry. I knew nothing about womb care, even though I have one. <laughs> I don't I don't either. So <laughs> I knew I knew it's nothing about her. to be caring for. <laughs> Yeah, I knew, <laughs> I knew nothing about fertility before I started this. And as relationships, the best relationship I know is being in front of my computer, training young people and and, and training people about social media. So uh, relationships, I didn't know much about that either. Um, herbal medicine, clueless. And so what I did was I just used the internet to come up and see exactly the types of things that were being written around this and came up with content that now talks about five healthy foods for a uterus, right? Do we know that we can eat certain foods that uh, gives you a healthy uterus? And so um, this is the content from that. Um, Seven ways to have a healthy uterus. Um, And we talked about conception. We talked about sperm cells. We talked about cervical fluid. We're talking about ovulation. We're talking about a fertile window. We're talking about fertile mucus. Oh my gosh. (laughs) didn't know about any of these things before this client. And that was just because I took the keywords that she gave me and I scoured the internet. And then I came up with these ideas of of what's out there as to what kind of content we can now produce. Does that make sense? Mm Mm-hmm. And so that's what you're going to do. And so here, when we looked at the fertile mucus, we looked at the probability of pregnancy. We're looking at the fertility in your 20s, fertility in your 30s, fertility in your 40s. We're looking at, then we turn around and we have relationship and sexual health and 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 and, and the seven aspects of a healthy relationship. And so now this is all stuff that we've done where we've researched and kind of got to know for three months and got content where we could actually come and pull content uh, and add some visual pictures such that when we begin to circulate this information, we have a place to go to get content. This is what your marketing um, concept is going to look like. It's going to look like a content 
your content and a calendar. Okay. Okay. And so for this content, it is basically saying for four weeks, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, she's going to have a newsletter one time per week. That's the email blast on Fridays. She's going to have blogging two times a month. That would be the first Monday and the fourth mon Monday. And all throughout the week, she's going to get seven social media posts per week. So she's going to get posts on Monday from 9 to 12, Tuesday from 9 to 12, Wednesday from 9 to 2, Saturday from 11 to 1, and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. This doesn't have any p.m. hours. I'm, I'm assuming because once I did the research, I saw that women was probably most active on social media during these during these times. And I can actually even put here um, what media channels would go where. I think with this particular client, uh, client, um, I hadn't decided yet on where they were going to where these social media posts were going to go to which social media handles. But you can also put that there as well. You can say, Monday, we're going to post on Facebook. Tuesday, we're going to post on Instagram, that kind of thing. Okay. Hold on a second. I'm in class. Can I call you back? All right. All right. Bye-bye. Right. Okay. So, okay. So, um... So this is kind of what the content is going. So this part is going to be the 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 whole media content. Uh -huh. This is what it's going to look like. So you're going to find content as well as say when is this content going to air for each of the seven uh -huh. uh, entities that you have. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and so this is her full three month like content planning. Yep. Okay. Yep. And it's really for you to see um, so that when you, so, so that when you, you want to plan it first so that when, okay, so let's take you to iCloud. So this is kind of where you're going next. Mm -hmm. iCloud is the system that I use to schedule. Um, um, and so when you look here, you have Memoir Moments, TMT Youth Community Foundation. It's nothing for me to add a DCLT here. We can talk to Sherry about it. And this is kind of, I love this one over Hootsuite. Uh, we were actually using HubSpot. I love this one because it just gives you everything and it's easy. Um, so let's just take a look at it because this is where you're going to you're going to end up. Um, here's the content library. So you see my content library? Mm -hmm. It's full of content, right? So before you even start to schedule content, you want to create a content library that has um, information that you pulled from um, your marketing strategy mm -hmm. and into here such that it becomes easy for you to then schedule whatever you want to schedule. Mm -hmm. But before you even get to this software, you need to have a bucket of content sitting somewhere in each of those seven areas. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, and so so let's look at the dashboard here. So this again, this system I love it because it tells it tells you how many upcoming posts you have posts this week. Um, it also sends con um, content for pending approval. Um, I did some stuff for DCLT and Sherry was like, "Hey, um, you went out to um the the design meeting and the pastor from." over this church was saying that what people need to do. And I just don't think that we need to release that as an organization on our website with a pastor saying what other pastors should do because it didn't fall in line with the corporate voice of DCLT. Does that make sense? And so before we even get to the point of we actually having posting or actually having created content that doesn't get to the corporate voice, what you're doing right now pulls that together. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so you actually have a content pending approval so that once we get everything written the way that it needs to be written and Sherry looks at it and approves it, then um, she, when you actually pull the post together, this should already be 
almost pretty much a go because everything you're doing speaks for the organization as per the core mission mm -hmm. values of the organization. The, yeah. So, um, so also with this system, you um, have, you can respond to all of the social media handles in one space. So we talked about, we haven't talked about the different areas and the people that you need to help you with this. I don't want to scare you off right now, but what this system does is it helps you be able to not only come up with the content and look at the analytics for the content, but also respond to what people are saying to you on those different social media handles in one space. Oh okay. yeah, that's great. How how much does this cost? <laughs> I this is okay. So since you get it through me, it's only like an additional thirty five dollars a month. Okay. And um, it it's is not like it's it's not up to me anyway. But you know, <laughs> I mean, well, you'll be using it, and I'm gonna yeah. give you access to it this week, so you can kind of see where you're gonna end up, mm -hmm. such so that you can kind of see what we're doing and why you need to be able to have a bucket of things to pull from. Yeah. So you're not really thinking. It's just like copy paste, different picture, copy paste, video, copy paste. And you're making yourself seem like an expert in the industry on all seven of those areas that we talked about. Right, right. Okay. Okay, so um, so then the content library is here. Now, the approvals are here. What we just talked about, you would schedule the approval, the approval recommendations. So when I'm talking about in the social media world, we talk about social listening, right? Uh -huh. So the social listening part of it all is that research that we're talking about. Well, here, this platform does it for you. So you can actually, um, and some, so, some platforms give you the social listening as far as you can type a hashtag in, like you do hashtag renovations, and it'll tell you how many people are searching for that so that you can understand how relevant that that search word or keyword is out there for you. But we'll get into that um, later down the line when we are looking at some of the analytics portion of it. So like, so here is content recommendations. If I put in construction, how construction gets smarter with data intelligence. So now you actually have um, 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 articles, blogs, things that's being printed on the internet that is giving you, uh, that you can actually straight use the URL and actually put into your content for the week. Or you can also use it as social listening to see how you can repurpose some of their content for uh, for a campaign. Mm -hmm. So this big part is called social listening. With this software, it allows you to post now. It allows you to put schedules up um, as well. So once you create that content, you come over to um, the system, you come over um, and you actually drag, the, this is the content from my content library. And I can actually drag post over. I can actually drag post over and schedule some stuff. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to the marketing strategy. And what I want you to do is we're going to go back in and we're going to see how we can beef up what you currently have. So with you seeing that, right, like with renovations, with the marketing strategy, um, now that we know that we want to be able to find some content about renovations, you do some research on your part and tell me how you can add more here. Okay.
you want to um, charge your internet. Oh, right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. Uh-huh. Sticking to our renovations. Just stay in Google. Just yeah. renovations. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, what I had was really just Google search. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Core remodeling. Okay. And I'm beefing up which part? The promotion or the marketing strategy. So let's look at what, okay. So for me, this is my marketing strategy for three months for this one top. Well, for, okay. So I, I get, she gave me one, two, three, four topics, right? So what I did was I took womb and I came up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven discussion points I could have for womb. What discussion points can you come up for reconstruction? Oh, okay. Discussion points. Um, like the actual process of renovating something? Yeah, yeah. Because oh. what happens is you're establishing DCLT as a as a as a thought leader in this in this marketplace in this marketplace of reconstruction. And it may just be reconstruction of this current project. So you may just want to turn to the documents you already have for the new construction or the renovation that you've got. Well, you don't have a renovation going on now. You've got new construction going on now. So yeah, turn to the internet, reconstruction, put it in the search engines. What comes up? Well, wait, renovation or reconstruction? Renovation. Okay. All right, I'm on, I'm on a website. I'm on a remodeling website. Okay, what do you see? Um, portfolio. Okay, so what is it? Portfolio additions and renovations. So they have like a photo gallery of their stuff, materials, residential services. What are some of the residential services? Needed for um, additions and renovations, kitchen remodeling, bathroom re remodeling, attic finishing and remodeling, basement finishing, remodeling, outdoor living, new home building, handyman services. Now you guys actually re renovate kitchens, don't you? And bathrooms, right? Yeah. I, I don't know what the, I'm very like have very general knowledge of what kind of renovations we need um, because it's probably different. I mean, some of them, it's like full gut. I think it's like full gutting. Okay, well then look at full gutting. Okay. Because I know that when I, I did with uh, Selena, she was saying they do new plumbing. And so if I was you, I would look at the new plumbing aspect of it. How does that increase the value of a house? Um, um, uh, um, so this is the part where you got to really start to strategically think about what goes on in the organization, and what bucket of information you want sitting at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like I had a client one time where he talked about, he was a, he was a, a heating and air conditioning. Um, he did heating and I learned everything I need to know about heating and air conditioning. I, 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 I realized you need a maintenance plan every two years. If you didn't, it, your, 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 your warranty on your, on your heating and air conditioning doesn't work you know, those types of things. So you've got to apply what you know about DCLT and getting a bucket of information that now applies to what you guys are doing to have at your access. So give me some examples of that when it comes to reconstruction. Use your, use, use your search engine. E examples of what? Put gutting, reconstruction gutting in the oh, computer. Oh, okay. I'm on a, a gutting website called New Western. Is it cheaper to gut or a house or rebuild? Um, okay, so it, it's cheaper to gut remodel. It does what it says? Yes. Okay, well then write that down. It's cheaper to gut remodel. Mm -hmm. Why? Um,
Oh no, hold on. Uh, <laughs> I guess because you still have the studs of the house up. Okay, you bring it down to the studs and then you rebuild, right? Mm -hmm. So, but give me some concrete reasons. Usually someone out there has told you uh, do uh, um, the reason why it's better to go. So put that in there. Is it cheaper to gut? Put that in your search engine. Mm -hmm. Do a gut rehab. Or do 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 benefits of a gut rehab. Benefits of a gut rehab. What you see? Uh, allows for more freedom of design. Um, there are pros and cons to both options with gut rehab and construction. Uh, a renovation will be easier to undertake than fully gutting your home. Your home. Yeah, I don't. I don't actually know. I don't really know what I think there's like some home, homes that need varying levels of renovation. So it, it really depends. Okay, are um, you seeing any information out there that you haven't seen before or is totally new to you? Um, not really. Okay, so let me, let me, let me, let me see what I can find, hold on. So you're right. The first thing I see is a picture gallery. gallery. Mm -hmm. So I'll definitely write that down, picture gallery. Okay, so I've got, what are the three types of renovations? Um, the four types of renovation projects, the basics, carb appeal, best bang for your buck, and passion projects. Mm -hmm. So that's just someone just named it for me and 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 um four types of home re uh, renovation takeaways there are four types of renovation projects the basics curb appeal the best bang for your buck and passion projects the difference between investors and owners the basics the basics are the things that every first time buyer expects when they purchase a home those include a roof that doesn't leak Functioning gutters, downsprouts, a dry basement, a reliable furnace, solid floors, walls that are in good repair, retaining walls that work, and functioning plumbing and HV, HVA systems. I would just cut this information out right here and cut and paste it and put it in a document because that's what people are looking for when they're looking for a home. It says it right here. So when you're doing renovations, any type of information that I found that was that was well written and sounds good, I will stick it in a document. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is the part where I get confused because I really, I, um, uh, I, I don't think I completely understand if the marketing strategy has to do with like getting more donations Content. or, explaining content. content okay content content is king content um i also feel like it's hard to kind of translate this like um you know these sort of for-profit construction websites to what we do like using you don't want it. That's not what you want to do. You want to look for language that helps people understand what it is you do. And so instead of you making up that language, you can see what other people's language is okay. under these topics. Because if someone researches renovations, mm -hmm. you want DCLT to come up. Okay. And so what you want to do is, so these are key words that you want to associate with DCLT. And so every article that you write for blogging 
for newsletters, for social media, what happens is those seven areas that we just talked about, we mm -hmm. want DCLT to pop up in a search engine. Okay. So this is about getting search engine hits, really. The SEO, okay. improving your search engine optimization under what it is that DCT does. So what you want to do is you want to present DCLT as a thought leader in those spaces when you're dealing with social media. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the word renovation is being researched I want to say, and I don't have a tool in front of me that gives RFH, um, a refs is a tool that lets you know, HubSpot is a tool that lets you know how many times the word renovations has been searched each day on the internet. Say it's 12,000 times in an hour. So what happens is the more DCLT is associated with that word now, anytime anybody is searching for that word in Durham, DCLT pops up. So um, you have, go ahead. No, no, now I'm like getting it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. So, so what happens, so social media is not like advertising. It's not like newspaper. It's sort of like going to a party and you've got on the hottest shoes at the party and so someone comes up and says, girl, I love your shoes. And you say, oh, I like your shoes too. And then there's a conversation. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So DCLT wants to be associated with renovations, um, affordable, uh, affordable housing. It wants to be associated with, what are the key terms you have? Um, new construction, um, oh. that green sustainability, so when people are looking for those things, mm -hmm. you want the search engine to say, hey, ding, 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 DCLT, they've been talking about that. They just talked about that in a blog the other day. So let me bring them to the front of the search page. And you then begin to create a relationship with that person looking for that keyword. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we want to see what else has been written up under construction and anything that you don't know, or it applies to what it is. You want to just create a folder, copy and paste all of this stuff that's brand new. When you come up for this word that can apply to you as an organization, then you want to spin that back into your own content. Okay. Okay. So what you want to do is you, so let's look at just the word the word reconstruction, put it in and see what comes up. And you say, hmm, that sounds like DCLT. Let me copy paste that. Mm, that sounds like DCLT. Reconstruction or renovation? Renovation, okay. you, which, one, which one you want? I think, <laughs> reno I think renovation. Renovation. Because it, it's different from reconstruction. Okay. Um, okay, so what comes up is, you know, the dictionary definition um the wikipedia and then we have like local um renovation like uh i guess construction companies come up like minerva design and okay and well trends. click on anything wherever your heart desire takes you just click right now i'm an investopedia and it gives me a first time buyer's home checklist so it doesn't matter whether you low income or you high income you got a checklist you want the hvac system to work you want walls that are in good repair. You want gutters that's down sprouts. You want, you want dry basement. You want reliable furnace. You want, and so you can say here at DCLT, we do all these things with a picture. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have to write the content. All you have to do is copy, paste, make it apply to you. And so all you got to do is pick the picture and then come back to this base of content of words that's already written that you want to pair up with your design. Because we're going to get to design. Yeah. Okay. So mostly I'm seeing pictures. Okay. Okay, so let me tell you, I'm gonna share my screen with you. So can you see my screen? Can mm -hmm. you see my screen? You can see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so I'm an Investopedia, right? Okay, so I'm somewhere on the internet and I'm gonna say four types of home renovation, which one, which one boosts value? How to recoup the cost of renovation when you sell? Um, I want to say there are four types of renovation projects, the basics, curb appeal, best bang for the buck, and passion projects. 
Um, I didn't know about that. The basics include the basics include the roof doesn't leak, functioning gutters. Okay, so I like that. When you, we do rehabs, we're gonna do the basics, right? And so I'm just gonna put that over here. I'm gonna start a new document. And I'm just gonna paste. Oh, wrong thing. Let's go back. Oh, wow. Let's do this again. Edit, copy, mm -hmm. edit, paste. Okay, so this is the basic. I would just say gut. I would say gut renovations. Okay, so then I would say, so it said four types of renovations. I'm just gonna go with the, I'm gonna go with the first thing he said. Add one copy, edit, paste. There are four types of renovations. Uh, um, the basics, carbon, and so here's the basics. I'm just gonna make that bold. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna, the best bang for your buck. Paste. Do y'all do carpet peel? Are you putting grass in the front? Um. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, we have like a we have a volunteer. Well, yeah. I mean, we plant like flowers and shrubs and stuff. Okay. So then you have the carpet peel features. Uh, best bang includes new siding, kitchen renovations, and new windows. That's what she did. Passion projects include swimming pools, tennis courts, hot tubs, wine cellars, and game rooms. Y'all not doing that, right? No. No. So I would just delete that. That doesn't apply to me, right? Yeah. But all of this applies to me, right? So mm -hmm. I would change that. At, at DCL2, see, we're doing four types of renovation projects or four things are included in our renovation projects. We're going to give you curb appeal. We're going to give you best bang for our buck. And we're going to make sure that everything is functioning and nothing leaks. But this, the content and the verbiage is right there. And I didn't have to come up with a thought process of anything. I just found this, this, this formula on a website about renovation. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you would, I, so you would use like these exact verb words in like a blog post or a social media post? Like not exactly, okay. not exactly. No, yeah. no, 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 not exactly. I would use the way that they have written and the way that they have researched as a way to help formulate what my campaign looks like over three months. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I would, it's called social listening. You have to listen to what's out there socially. And so what you've got to do is you've got to research it inside of that, that platform that I showed you, that place where it's saying, hey, look up your subject is the social listening. What mm -hmm. out there exists already around your subject matter that you want to be associated with now on the internet to improve your SEO, to reach your marketing objectives. Because mm -hmm. the SEO is what's really gonna get you in front of the customers if it's already owned assets. So right now we're working on your owned assets, not what we buy, just what comes up organically. Does it make sense? Working on our owned assets. Uh huh. So let's go back to um to to what we looked at last week. Mm -hmm. So we looked at okay. So we looked at um which word is it? It's um owned media assessment. Owned media. Preview. Okay. Not preview. Oh.
Why is this not coming up? Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm going to get back there in a second. No, I mean, we talked about own media assets last week when we talked about your website, your blog, your catalog. Oh, and, okay. okay. So what we're doing right now is create, what are we going to put on our owned media? So what are you going to put about renovations on your own media? What are you going to put about reconstruction on your own media? And your marketing strategy defines that. Mm -hmm. So do you want, you want this, you want me to put this example of the Yoni parlor in your back office so you can see what that looks like? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'll put that in your back office and your content for each of those seven is supposed to look like that. So how are you gonna, how, how are you, when you talk about renovations, how many times are you gonna post a week about it? Mm, I really don't know. <laughs> Okay, so you can say you can you can, let's let let me help you. So let's say I'm gonna spend because you got seven topics, right? Yeah. So so I would say um, day one is renovations. Day two is reconstruction. Day three is designed to getting new partners. Day four is designed to whatever your list is, right? So that's your calendar, right? So then, what are you gonna say about reconstruction? We just talked about that that um there are 30 DCLT homes in need of renovation that we need funding for. Would we'll, we'll then talk about each one of those homes. Okay. Do you know about each of them? Do you know what you want to do with each of them? No. Okay. So then so then you can talk about renovations in general. You can talk about the carb appeal in general, right? You can talk about the gut piece in general. You can talk about why you need a working HVAC system, right? You can talk about why you need a funk, or you can talk about what are some of the new upgrades in kitchens that you're putting into these um, into these spaces. Mm -hmm. When you when this your on Mondays, when you're going to release a post about renovations, what is the bucket of content that you're going to use? You've got to develop that. When you are going to talk about reconstruction on Tuesday, what is the bucket of content you're going to use? When you talk about green sustainability and net zero, what is the bucket of content you're going to use? Mm -hmm. You got to go get the bucket of content. And you yeah. have to do that social release, huh? That's the, uh, the uh, question, Sherry. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. Do you know how to get the content? Mm, I'm I just trying to think of it in terms of like uh, making it relevant to what we're doing, but I'll need more knowledge about what we're doing specifically in order to do that. Okay. Um, um, so I'll, I'll have to do that myself. You have, you do, you do. Okay. So let's start with the Grant Street project, right? Mm -hmm. You've got information for that, right? Yeah. From the thing you sent me. Yeah. Right. So let's just look at that. Let's look at you putting together a content calendar with just the information that you have mm -hmm. on the Grant Street project. So you've got the Grand Street project. You what you want to do now is you want to let's go back to the Yoni stock, the Yoni parlor or Derm. Let's see that example for that client. Where is it? So let's just go here. Uh, 
Um, okay. Let's just start with what you already have access to. And um, what you already have access to is Grant Street, right? Um, and let's pull together a calendar around Grant Street and kind of what you're going to say for four email blasts for Grant Street and what you would actually say for however many posts a week you want for Grant Street. Mm -hmm. And two blogging articles. Let's just follow this, 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 this particular um, three month plan. So for one month, I want you to write um, four email blasts about it. And I want you to write two blogs about it. And that'll be your next assignment since you already have that information. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to schedule social media posts according to how you're going to talk about this project. I want you to tell me what times that they're going to be there. And I want you in the times that you write out to write out, say for instance, let's say that you're gonna do two pictures and a video. And you're gonna do three posts per week. And I want you to write out what the pictures are gonna say per week inside of this calendar. Mm -hmm. And we'll start there. So then that way, instead of you doing them all, and, and, and I'll tell you what, what I'll do is I'll do your homework for you. <laughs> and I'll, I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like from me doing the social listening for the rest of them. And then you start on what you already have. Okay. Because uh, I want to I be at your comfort level and I'll do the market research. And then I'll show you how, what it looks like when I come back. Okay. Okay. Is that good? Is that a deal? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So do you know what you're supposed to be doing? Creating something like this, this, yes, and, mm -hmm. this, the relevant to Grant Street. Yep. For three months. Mm -hmm. And you can, and you only have to put the one month calendar because we're going to replicate this each month, but I want you to put the schedule of what it is. And for the first month, I want you to, to, um, to form out some kind of campaign. And I actually have the design meeting for Grant Street. So you mm -hmm. can even say some of your videos are going to come from the videos out of that library. Oh yeah. That'd be okay. Be so what we'll do is we'll have you put together a campaign and I'll put, and I'll lay down the marketing research for the rest of them. And then that way, since it's not intuitive to you, then 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 we can then come in and then you can do the rest of it for the others with me having done the research. Okay. Is that a deal? Yeah. Okay. I yeah, I hope you're not like going easy on me or something. I'm just uh, you know, I'm always just trying to like kind of translate this to what I you know, well, I just, I just want to, I want to match, I want to match what, where you feel comfortable, but I also want DCLT to have what it needs. So yeah. I'm here to help you get that. And so wherever you are is where, is where, we're, is where I'm going to take you. Um, and yeah. so I think that you feel comfortable with working with information you already have and let me do the social listening for you. Um, because I've got over 20 years of marketing experience. So I may be putting too much on your dare. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't really have that. So, <laughs> so I'm going to start where you are. So do you know what you're supposed to do for next time? As long as you come back with your homework, I'm good. And you come back with your homework. So I'm, I'm high-fiving you on that because that means that we can go somewhere and I understand your level of, 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 of comprehension to what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, so I'm doing the Grand Street content calendar. Yes. Okay. And you're going to tell me, um, uh, calendar wise, you're going to put that in Excel. And tell me what it is. And then you're going to use the um, Zenfolio. So you know how to get there for Grant Street. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm putting a calendar in Excel. Yes. And I'm putting, what am I putting in Zenfolio? You're going to pull, you're going to, you can actually 
say what the content is going to be based upon the content you already have. You, you understand? So I'm just using content from Zenfolio and not putting anything in there. Yeah, you can put you can put you can put stuff in Canva. We can also put stuff in Canva. But for what you're really going to do is you're going to say what is the the campaign? What is it going to consist of for three months? So just like in that other three month, I said, okay, this is the content that we're going to use. And this is what we're going to discuss. We got to be able to schedule content around ideas and around smart goals mm -hmm. and a storyline. So what we're doing now is coming up with that storyline. Um, content and storyline. Okay. And Zenfolio already has some content that's already there. Okay, so I'm getting content from Zenfolio. Mm -hmm. And then you can also create some content in Canva. But for right now, I don't really want to schedule content. I want you to have access to content so you can come up with storyline. Because you see how the Yoni parlor had a storyline? womb, fertility, fertility's in your 40s, fertility's in your 20s. So like when I hit a social media post on Monday, my social media post is going to talk about fertility in your 20s. And I already have content for that. I might not have a picture for it, but I already know where my content is going because I've already developed a storyline with the information I have in my back office. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you've got you've got stuff that um, you've get, you've got the template for Grant Street. You've got okay. stuff in. Do you know how to get to the stuff in Zenfolio for Grant Street? Let me look at Zenfolio and see if I can find it easily. Yeah, it's too much TV dot Zenfolio. Too much TV INC dot Zenfolio dot com. Okay, and it's client libraries, 2022 or 2021? 2021. Okay, client libraries. And doing DCLT design meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you have the architect in there talking about why you had the, the pastors in there talking about why they're part of CAN. You had Alex Willie in there talking about... Um, um uh, the importance of the design meeting so there was a lot of stuff around this new construction that now you can use as content and so now you've got to come up with a storyline for the month using what the pdf and using the video uh, and let's see dclt see design meeting videos in here just pictures you don't see videos in there? No, they're mm -hmm. videos. They're definitely videos. Okay, let's see. Too much TV. You still don't see the videos? No, just just pictures. Okay, let's see. DCLT design meeting. Yeah, so if you go down to the bottom, 180. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Um, all of those are um videos. I think they may be at the bottom. Oh, okay. Got them? Yeah, I see these. Okay, so you want to kind of uh, go through them and you might not need the whole video. You might want to, he might want to take out something he said at 20. And you might, and you want, you want to put together a storyline of new construction for Grand Street. Mm -hmm. And you've already got the proposal, right? I got what? You already have the proposal. Yes, I think it's in Zoho. Yeah, and I will put um, the Yoni Parlor 
and for Zoho. And then that's what you're going to tell me. You're going to put it just the same way that I did in the calendar. You're going to, um, you, can you see it? Wait, let me, I'm sorry. I'm not looking at your screen. Hold on. Um, full screen. Okay. Repeat the last part you said, sorry. So you're going to do it just like this. Okay. And you're going to put that um, under renovations and you're going to tell me newsletter, blogging, social media, and what that looks like. Cause you're going to, you're going to have a blogging class and you're already doing a newsletter. Okay. So you got any questions? Don't think so. Um, we don't really do. So what we've done and tell me if this is like, we should change this, but in the past, our newsletter has not been very frequent. It's been like maybe once a month. Um, I think our our like belief before was like we don't want to send too many emails because then people won't open them if they see emails from us too often. Do you think that line of thinking is like incorrect? It just depends on your audience. It depends on what you're covering in your newsletter. It depends on um um how you want people to engage it, it it has a lot of factors but you can always um if you feel like do you feel like it should, if you ask me that question like you feel like it should be more frequent I don't um, I don't know I don't really yeah I don't want to email people too often um because I just know for me as a consumer like if I see an email from some some organization or company or whatever, like multiple times a week, I'll unsubscribe because I'm like, I don't have time to read that many um, emails. And so mm -hmm. we've like done more where we kind of compile all the information we want to send in an email blast over the course of a month so that it's all just in one place rather than sending someone like one email a week. But I don't know, I'm not an expert. So I could be wrong in thinking that. Well, it depends. It depends on how engaged your audience is, how engaged your community is for information. Uh, you, I mean, the residents may want to hear from you once a week. The, the your potential donors may only want to hear from you once a month just to make sure that you're still alive and well and their donations going well. So it just depends on your audience and it just depends on the information that you're communicating. Now, what you can do is you can test it. You can say, okay, well, we're sending emails once a month. Let's try two and let's look at our, and look at our open rate. So you can actually, once you get into having your content where it's easily, because before you sending, before you increase the number of emails, I want you to get it down to a science that says we're going to have renovations discuss X amount of times a month. And so you, once you come up with your calendar and you look at your content, that's also another way for you to decide how often you want to communicate to your community. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then you can always test it out. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put this in your Zoho. And so next week when you see me, your uh, Grant Street is going to look like this. And it's going to tell me what you're going to post. So like for here, what, I look, what I'm looking at in three months is I'm looking at uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 topics that I have access to over the next three months. Mm -hmm. So what are your topics going to be? And then what is the information under those topics? What does it look like? So when I see you, I'm going to have um, topics that is going to be content for new construction for Grand Street. You got it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're going to hop off each other. <laughs> we didn't get a chance to get into the WordPress today, but it's already 1115. So yeah, it's already done. And, yeah. and this, I think that this is, um, this gives you enough to, to chomp on. Remember, I'm just going to, I don't want to overload. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to overload you. You yeah. good? Yeah. I think, I think this is de definitely enough for me to get started on for next week. And I'll just try, I don't know. I'm, Try not to be too much a perfectionist with it because sometimes I start oh. doing something and I'm like, I don't really know anything about this. So I'm no, doing it wrong. Don't and get afraid and shut down on me. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> 
even if you feel like it's wrong, come back with some information, anything. Come back okay. with some information. Okay. Where the like my marketing plans from last week, I really had didn't really know what I was doing. What it did what a good job. It, okay. We, a, right. we, we we talked about it. So we we, okay. we talked about it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna beef up that um that um that um ideal target for each one yeah. of them and then for one of them you're gonna come back and bring me one of these okay so i want you to beef up the ideal target for to include demographics where are these people where can we find them what they look like they black they white they old they 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 hispanic they they who, where are they shopping mm -hmm. what, what, what are they reading so give me that information for each one of them. And then compare only one, we're going to do this amount of information for only one, which is the one you already have information for. Mm -hmm. And that is new construction for Grant Street. Okay. Okay. So you got it? Yeah. Okay. Don't freeze up on me. You got this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'll see you next Monday. All right. See ya. Have right. a good Thanksgiving. You too. Don't eat too much. <laughs> no, we're, don't have to worry about that. I don't like right. <laughs> Have a good one.